Density, specific volume, specific weight, and specific gravity are all terms that are incredibly common in different science and engineering applications. Some of them more common than others, depending on circumstances we'll talk about, but for a long time I had a little bit of confusion, not enough that I couldn't apply them correctly, but I think I didn't fully understand exactly what some of these things were pushing at. And this is sad because, as I'll discuss in this video, they're mostly pretty simple. Um, so this is just hoping to clear up any confusion that someone might have about some of these terms. We'll start with density because that's kind of the most simple. I think we're introduced to that the most early on. I think for me this was sixth or seventh grade. You know, we had kind of the classic example of teacher had a graduated cylinder. It was filled up to a certain level with water. You drop a mass, a known solid mass into it. You check the volume change and from that you calculate density. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here because before we talk about density, let's make it first very clear what our terms mass, volume, and weight are. Now you might roll your eyes. These are very simple, right? But let's just, let's just make sure we're all on the same page here. Mass is simply a measure of the matter in an object. Right, so this is this goes back to our very, very fundamentals, right? Atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons. How much stuff is contained in an object, in, in a human being like you or me, in a piece of paper, in a pen, in any of these things? Volume is related to how much space something takes up. For example, uh, this pen takes up much less volume than my physical human body. And finally, weight is a measure of the force exerted by gravity on an object. And of course, if you've taken an introductory physics course, I would be surprised if at some point the teacher didn't come up with, with a question, you know, either on a quiz or, or just in casual class conversation, you know. Uh, if you go to the moon, does your mass change and does your weight change? And of course, the, the simple answer then is your mass does not change because that's based on how much stuff is in you, which, which does not change. Your volume, of course, doesn't change either. And finally, your weight does because the gravity on the moon is significantly lower than the force of gravity, the gravitational field on Earth. Okay, so that's mass, volume, and weight. So finally, let's mention density. Density is usually denoted by the Greek letter rho, and its definition is the amount of mass per unit volume, m over v. And we usually have some intuition for what something that is more dense is versus something that is less dense, right? If you have a block of gold, let's say extreme example, versus a block of foam, you know, what, what do you, which one do you think is going to be heavier intuitively? So what this actually means is that gold is more closely packed, that there's more stuff in that space than there is with the foam. And of course, if we broadly break this up into, let's say, um, states of matter, then gases are generally going to be the least dense, followed by liquids, followed by solids. And of course, this isn't always the case. You know, there are solids that float in liquids, in water. You know, again, something like, like foam is very, you know, a certain space of foam is going to be less dense than, uh, than water. But generally, you know, a gas like air is going to be very light. You know, you fill a balloon up with air, and it's it's incredibly light. You can bop it around, do whatever. Fill the balloon up with water, it's a little bit heavier. And then let's say you have a, a you manufacture a steel, steel into the shape of a balloon, you know, solid throughout, and then that would be the most dense. So that's density, and the units... For this, of course, if it's mass per unit volume, this is where we'll get into something a little bit interesting. In SI, this is going to be kilograms per meter cubed. And of course, using the metric system, you could change the units, you know, to grams per cubic centimeter, whatever you want. And in the good old imperial system, technically, in order for it to be a density, it would have to be slugs per cubic foot. And this is where, you know, again, in America, this is what we use, and my education, of course, was American, so this is what this is what we technically are supposed to use, but in America, we use it quite interchangeably with pound mass per foot cubed. 
when we talk about specific weight, we'll talk about why these are different. Um, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because we should talk about specific volume first. Specific volume is interesting. So when we say specific in this context, this is in kind of, I don't know who started it, but for me, I see it in a lot of engineering disciplines. Specific is indicates per unit mass, right? And all that the specific volume is, this is denoted by a lowercase v. I better, let's make it clear that this is an uppercase v there. This is a lowercase v. It's going to be equal to the total volume divided by the mass of something. And of course, for those of you who are who are paying extra close attention here, you'll notice that that's equal to rho to the negative one or one over rho. So it's the inverse of density. And uh, conceptually, that means there's no real extra explaining to do. It's a measure of how much volume per unit mass is taken up. Um, simple enough. But then the actual application of this is important because like I said, in a lot of engineering disciplines, it's important to analyze things on a per unit mass basis, right? Especially in thermodynamic or fluid systems, right? You've got some mass being transported and you really don't want to think about how, you know, changing masses and stuff like that are going to impact your overall uh, volume. So you use a specific volume, right? Which is independent of the actual mass. Of course, this, this ties into things like specific enthalpy, specific internal energies, uh, basically, it's it's for mathematical convenience in a lot of engineering systems. So that brings us to now specific weight. And this for this, I'll step back a little bit. I'm curious to know if in countries outside of the U.S., in countries that use the metric system, is specific weight really taught? You know, because this is this is a weird thing we do. We don't use specific in the sense that we say specific volume. It is not per unit mass. The specific weight is denoted by gamma and is defined as the weight per unit volume. Interesting. So really, when we say pound mass per foot cubed, a pound is a pound. Even though it's called a pound mass, right, it really is a weight uh, for those of you who might not understand, or even in America. For a while, I, I wasn't fully certain on this, you know. Like, why do we call it pound mass versus pound force? Are they any different? Truthfully, no. You know, they're, they're the same force. They're both a measure of force. One is just a pound mass is weight. So, you know, how much does this uh, graduated cylinder weigh as a weight? That would you would say technically that's in pound mass versus, oh, let's say we, we have a piston for whatever reason pushing on this, this graduated cylinder applying a force F, an external force F that would be in pounds force. So when we say weight over unit volume, of course, we're talking about a force per unit volume. And that's just something that, again, I think is mostly used in America. Correct me, uh, someone, someone international, if this isn't the case, but it is a unit of weight per unit, per unit volume. Right, And that's basically so we can get away from using slugs per foot cubed because we never talk about slugs. I think they come up a little bit depending on, you know, it, of course, if you're in the United States or one of the few other countries that uses the imperial system, um, they might come up in certain units of density. But mostly we're going to talk about specific weights in terms of pound mass per foot cubed. And of course, this is a good opportunity to mention that really that means gamma is just rho times g. So if you wanted to find uh, the specific weight of something in newtons per meter cubed or kilonewtons per meter cubed, whatever you want, um, then you could do it. You just have to multiply by g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared or 32.2 uh, pounds per foot. Or, sorry, getting, getting all mixed up with units of feet per second squared. So, of course, this means in, in hydrostatics, you know, I did a video on hydrostatics a while back. Um, this means that if you have a known column of something like water, then you can just multiply directly by the height of the column if you're using this guy versus if you're working in the uh, metric system, you would definitely have to you do a rho GH, right? 
to give some references here before we move on to specific gravity because it will be important to mention these. Let's take water. The density of water in the metric system is about a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. That changes with things like the temperature. And the specific weight of water is going to be about 62.4 pounds per foot cubed. Okay. And it's important to mention this right now because now when we talk about specific gravity or SG, I don't think most people use any special Greek letters for that or anything. I usually just see it written as SG or something similar. SG is a ratio of an object's density density or specific weight to a reference reference density or specific weight. So what we reference things to most of the time is water. So when I was first learning different geological concepts, you know, I was looking at different rocks and minerals and, and a key property that's listed a lot of times is their specific gravity, because this is important for different scientific and engineering purposes. So for example, you know, most different types of igneous and sedimentary rocks, right, granites, sandstones, fall within the range of somewhere between 2.5 and 3 for their specific gravity. So 2.65, let's say, is a pretty good average. So like 2.65. So if we have a specific gravity of, let's say, a, a certain sample of granite is 2.65, then that's going to be equal to the density of that granite divided by the density of water. Okay, and we defined our density up here at 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, so you could solve that for the density of granite, and that would be 2,650 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay, so that's a quick, easy way of kind of referencing something back to a simple number, right? Water, it happens, is a very easy uh, number to work with, about 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And the numbers that we get for specific gravity, 2.65, are much nicer in general, too. And the same goes double if you're working in the imperial system where water, the specific weight is 62.4. So what's 62.4 times 2.65? Imagine saying that when you're talking about the, the, a, a way of measuring the, the weight of a sample of rock. It's much easier to say the specific gravity is 2.65. And of course, we can reference things to each other, right? Comparing a sample of granite versus, let's say, a... Uh, a lead ore, which might be over three because lead is very dense, things like that. And of course, the higher something is, the faster it will sink uh, with the, um, what should I call it, drag permitting. The final thing I'll mention here is that the specific gravity can also be referenced to air. Of course, for different types of applications, it's things like ventilation or looking at stratification of gases maybe even ana analyzing combustion gases, um, then we would want to reference it to air instead. So a super convenient way of doing that, and this gets a little bit into the chemistry, right, is using the molecular weights, which are the kilograms per kilomole um, of an object. So for air, that's going to be about 29. And then if we wanted to determine CO2 for like a, a gas stratification thing, um, let's call that CO2. Right, then some of the individual molecular weights, carbon is 12, uh, oxygen is 16 times 2, that'd be 32, so that'd be 44. So then the specific gravity of carbon dioxide in this case would be 44 over 29. And that would be one point something. In any case, you would say it's heavier than air. So you could look at it and say, okay, its relative position in a gas column would be uh, below normal air, but it might be above even denser gases, that kind of thing. So those are four terms. Again, they're they're all pretty simple in theory, especially, you know, just if you just want to use them mathematically, super easy. Um, but kind of the nuances of them, I, I wish were explained kind of just like this, you know, in a quick, a quick manner. I say quick, but we're going on 15 minutes here. So, you know, maybe I, maybe I meandered about a little bit, but yeah, the point is, 
once you have a, a solid fundamental understanding of these, I think things like unit analysis become much easier um, in just understanding the materials you're working with and the mathematical meanings, the mathematical and theoretical meanings behind some of the, the science or engineering applications that, be, that you'll be using uh, if you're going down that path. So we'll end it there. I will see you all in the future.